Well, here we are with Marilyn Diener. Marilyn lives in Why Missing, and we're in her stand, and it's a hot day, so there's a fan blowing in the background. Don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. And her art is called Schirenschnitte. Now, did I get that right, or is it Schirenschnitt? Do you no, drop that later? That would be singular. Okay. But uh, plural would be Schirenschnitte. Okay, so that's the lesson for the day, right? That's singular right. is Schirenschnitt. Right, and it's a German compound word meaning scissor cutting. Literally means scissor cutting. Right. All right. Marilyn's been at the Kutztown Folk Festival for 30 years, is that right? That is correct. All right, and you do some unique pieces, and they grace many people's homes, including mine. It's absolutely stunning work. Can you take us through the process? You, know, you start with drawing and, and so forth, Marilyn. All right. I do draw all my own designs and after I have them drawn, I usually make a photocopy of the design. And I have a box here with many different designs in them. Um, people request children. Uh, some of my regular designs are uh, folded, mm -hmm. and so I only need to uh, staple them fast so that they don't slip when I'm cutting. And that, uh, with me being here, of course, you're stopping, you're starting, you're talking, and uh, obviously it's something that if I didn't have it stapled in place, I I would probably uh, have many errors, but. Uh, I, I've been doing this for so long and I have, this is only probably about a 64th of what I, what I normally have, uh, one 64th I should say. I have a, a larger box at home that I have many different designs and of course it's nice when I come here because I, a lot of people see a piece that they wouldn't normally buy but they do uh, end up spending uh, a lot of money on some of my pieces and of course adding to their collection most likely. Okay, so you mount those pieces that you've drawn. I mean, this is all from scratch homemade art here. This these, is a truly an all artisan. all hand drawn. All hand drawn. Yes. And then what I do is I take an X-Acto knife to open my paper and between the design itself I will make a slice that's so that I don't have to keep poking the scissors through my finger and, and injuring my finger. So um, then after the piece is cut out, then what I do is I mount it on an acid-free backing and I'll put this on a piece You got the skunks paper. there. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll mount it on a, a, an acid-free paper and then I will uh, also mount, uh, use acid-free foam core in the frame to support the picture in the frame. Now I have some here. And then you cut this all out by hand? I cut them all out by hand, yes. Can't That's, imagine, you must be a woman of infinite patience. Well, I guess I have to have infinite, <laughs> infinite patience. What kind of scissors do you use? I use an iris surgical scissors. And um, these are all pieces that I've designed. And uh, I, I use an X-Acto knife, as I mentioned, only to open my paper. And this, this is the scissors? This is the scissors. And uh, they're German made, and probably in Zoling in Germany. And they are the best scissors that you could buy. Okay, take us to some of the pieces that are very popular or, I mean, my eye always goes to the nature scenes. I think they're gorgeous, although I must say that I did purchase from you a bicycling scene, which is really great this time of year in July. The Tour de France is always going on, so those of us that love that sport uh, like to be reminded of it. So that, your work reminds me of that in our home. But for example, behind you here, there's some deer under a pine tree and there's uh, some those, cows up here and horses. Those and... would be more uh, Swiss style paper okay. cuttings. Let's get up and take a look at those. So we're going to see a Swiss style now. We can point these out. Yes. Uh, they use a lot of uh, animals in their scenes. And of course these uh, particular pieces take me several days to cut out. Sure, but you see this kind of love of nature and combination and fusion of nature and art all the time when you're in the Alps. This stuff I find very pastoral and peaceful, and you've certainly captured it. How about something else that you, you really love doing? Oh, I, 
I have so many pieces that I really like to do. Um, I like the pineapple, for instance. The so. pineapple. Okay, let's see a pineapple. And, uh, this one? Yeah. Okay, we got a little glare, but... And several years ago, a couple was going to Scotland and they wanted me to make uh, the uh, thistle. Uh -huh. so the, oh. Which that is the uh, symbol of the scotch. And we have the thistle right here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely gorgeous. A bugger to get rid of in the garden, though. <laughs> there are bugger. But really pretty yeah. hanging on the wall. Right. I also enjoy doing florals. And this is a piece that I uh, came... I had started it years ago, but finally finished it probably last year. I do certificates for weddings and anniversaries and also for birth, birth certificates. And uh, occasionally I will add uh, color to my pieces, like uh, for instance this little boy with the, the uh, wheelbarrow, I might add colored pieces of paper. Some color in the tulips there. You have some irises up here that are in a purplish yeah. color. I don't know if that'll show up on the film here, but it's uh, absolutely gorgeous work. Here, we have a piece of Halloween art as we pan over here. And this looks like some kind of a Halloween parade that we might have remembered when we were kids. Right, yes. And then, of course, this has been a popular design of the Amish farm scene. Mm -hmm. Again, very pastoral. I also used to do just a single uh, horse and buggy, and I've added uh, the gentleman and the children in the buggy. Mm -hmm. as they, as you look you close, see you can them. see the gentleman and the children in the buggy. Look at the detail of that. There they are, on their way to or from somewhere, right? Right. Now, years ago, when my daughter was still in high school, um, Mary, um, she liked penguins so I started doing penguins and I have several different penguin pictures <laughs> there and, they are emperor penguins it looks like and I have one lady that comes to me every year at the folk festival looking for my newest penguin picture so uh, this year and last year I had to disappoint her I didn't have anything new this year so well you know your work is absolutely magnificent and we do appreciate the fact that you've been here for 30 years, not only creating these pieces yeah. of art to sell, but also you're demonstrating, you're mentoring. Right. If people have questions, you, you answer right. them. I, en I enjoy talking to the people because many people are unfamiliar with this form of art. They think sometimes that these idea the uh, pieces are painted and uh, know they're cut out of a piece of paper and uh, they can't believe it. It's awesome. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you around the festival grounds. This is Dave Klein for WEU Radio, Reading Eagle Newspaper, Burke's Country Magazine, the Mountain Folklore Column, the Mountain Folk Show, and the Kutztown Folk Festival Network. I'm here with Marilyn Diener, who lives in Y Missing, and I'm going to let her pronounce what her art is. Go ahead. It's called Sharon Schnitter. And Sharon Schnitter means what? Literally translated from German. It means scissor cutting, and yes, I do use my scissors. I create all my own designs, and I use a knife to open my paper, but I do all my cutting with the scissors. Can you recall, in all your years of making this beautiful art, the piece that maybe perhaps took you the longest ever to create, and how long that might have taken it? Was it something that you, you were inspired by nature or inspired by life? You know, every artist has their own story to tell about a special piece. Uh, actually, the largest piece I ever did was 55 inches by 36 inches, and it was a commission that I received from the Reading Hospital Auxiliary, and it depicted children playing and doing certain things, and uh, it took me several months not only to design it, but also to cut it out. I can't imagine the incredible patience you have. Uh, to do this kind of artwork. It must just take hours and hours, and it looks like you can do just about anything. I see some of your work here is everything from people on bicycles to children climbing trees to deers romping in, a, in the forest under a fir tree. It's, it's just gorgeous. Where do your ideas come from? Basically, many of them come from customers, but most of them I draw myself, and they come from my mind. And uh, I've been doing this for 40 years, and this is my 30th year at the Kutztown Folk Festival. Ah, that's amazing. So really, you're an artist of the drawing type before you're an artist of the sheer and snit type, right? Yeah. You, have to, you have to do both, right? Yes. 
Well, I uh, studied art at uh, Kutztown University, which was State Teachers College when I was going there. I did teach art for several years, but uh, I decided that I would like to do something else with my life. And I saw this, uh, it was on some artwork like this was on display at our historical society in Reading. And I came home and I sat down and I tried it and I liked it and I decided that was my niche. Well, I, I know you have a lot of people here that want to talk to you about your art. I don't want to hold you up here, but I want to say, again, your work is absolutely stunning. And just so that folks know, you don't just come here to the Kutztown Folk Festival and set up a stand. It's kind of a rigorous juried process. You just want to maybe explain a little bit about that. I mean, obviously your work speaks for itself, but again, you don't just come in and set up a stand. That's right. And part of being here, you do have to demonstrate your work. Uh, it gives people an idea of what goes into it. And also to remember that you're buying from the craftsperson, most likely, and also it's uh, American-made. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what makes it an heirloom piece. You're buying from the person who's actually making it. You actually are demonstrating to people here, showing the craft, and maybe perhaps mentoring people if they'd like to get started and try it. And uh, again, your work speaks for itself. Marilyn Diener, I wish you the very best at our Kutztown Folk Festival. It's always a pleasure to look at your work. I have some of your work hanging in my home. Well, thank you very much for stopping by, Dave. It was nice to see you again.